Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. In this video, we are going to discuss a famous arrow debris model. So, um, arrow uh, is a person, a famous, very famous economist, and debris is another economist. They have together um, analyzed uh, and formulated this model. That's why it is known as arrow debris model. And let's get started. This model uh, is named after two people. Uh, first one is Kenneth Arrow uh, he, uh, and the next person is Gerard, uh, Gerard Debreu. Okay. And these two people are Nobel laureates. Um, they have received Nobel Prize and they have formal, uh, popularized this model. They have formulated as well as popularized this model. Uh, we have many of you might be uh, aware about the valuation equilibrium model uh, when it comes to the arena of microeconomics. So this uh, arrow debris model has got something to do with uh, the valuation um, economic uh, equilibrium. Uh, this is or the valuation general equilibrium model. So uh, it is a formalized valuation economic equilibrium system and. The existence of its competitive equilibrium was proven by Arrow Debreu in the joint work Arrow Debreu model in 1954. They have solved for this model and they could find a solution. And solving the long standing problem of the um, existence uh, question in the validation general equilibrium model, uh, the Arrow Debreu model has considered to be a very important is considered to be a very important piece of um, piece of what to say theory or theoretical work in the general equilibrium analysis of microeconomics or welfare economics. And uh, this this is since the 1950s also. Now, that is very much important. From that time onwards, or from that time onwards, this model has been uh, widely um, uh, widely gained importance. But this it has gained a uh, widely uh, wide importance or um, at, at, uh, at around the same time or at around the 1950s we could see that uh, another economists have proved the existence of a competitive equilibrium in general equilibrium model and he has used a similar set of techniques um, which uh, was used by Arrow and Debreu in their Arrow Debreu model and uh, which made uh, the new person's entry into arrow debris model and thus arrow debris model is known as arrow debris mckenzie model so mckenzie was a person who um, made a late entry here but again since he uh, since he had made several uh, uh, what to say several improvements in the model or several expansions in the model um, this model is known as Arrow Debreu uh, Mackenzie model. Arrow Debreu model it specifies a competitive economy in which there are finite number of consumers, commodities, and production units. We know that the valuation general equilibrium model is a two into two into two model where you have two commodities, two uh, uh, what to say two uh, goods and two inputs. Where in the in this case uh, there are in the, the Arrow Debreu model. There are finite numbers of consumers, commodities, and production units. Consumers have a set of well-defined preferences, and these preferences are continuous. These are non-satiated, uh, satiated, and also these are convex. Okay, so these are the three important things that you have to understand when you take the consumers preferences into account. These are continuous uh, con preferences are continuous, uh, non-satiated, as well as convex. And each consumer holds an initial endowment of commodities with a positive quantity of at least one commodity. That means that they are making some kind of preferences in the market uh, and they are consuming at least a positive quantity of a single commodity. The technology that converts inputs into outputs is either non-increasing returns to scale or constant returns to scale. It is uh, uh, that is something that uh, which plays a very important role in the uh, Arrow Debreu uh, model, which says that there exists technology, and uh, and it is a technology uh, that is helping the production to take place, and uh, it, it is what helps the production uh, to uh, 
the helps the production to transform the out inputs into output and as a result of this transformation of inputs into output what they request is non increasing returns of scale or constant returns of scale in this economy every producer maximizes the profit and every consumer maximizes their utility so in this case we can see that uh, there exists some kind of an equilibrium kind of situation where uh, all the pro producers are in equilibrium and all the consumers are in equilibrium as a result the economy is in uh, in total it is in equilibrium they all both and uh, they are maximizing their uh, profit as well as they are maximizing um, their utility the consumers ma are maximizing their respective utility functions and the producers are you are uh, maximizing their respective um, uh, what to say uh, profit things the equilibrium of economy it is characterized by a set of prices at which the excess demand is zero for every commodity and the producers make zero profit so um, excess demand mean is zero means that there exists equilibrium uh, the supply equals demand so there is no excess demand and the producers make zero profit that means that uh, no zero profit means uh, what you pay is uh, i mean what consumers pay is equal to what producers get there is no uh, there is no excess profit and uh, these mark and uh, the equilibrium price here the price is at equilibrium okay and um, that means that demand equals supply that is the condition and here the market clearing prices are reached through a ten, uh, it is uh, to a tendonment process uh, in which the uh, price setter facilitates um, the price adjustment following a set of rules that assembles the way in which the prices are reached in the real competitive economy uh, so that means that uh, to an extent a perfect competition situation is there and formulated in purely mathematical form this model could be modified into some uh, uh, intertemporal models by taking some uh, uh, proper definition of commodities based on commodities location or uh, time of delivery all these kinds of things and when commodities are specified to be conditional on various states of the world this model can be easily uh, used to incorporate expectations and uncertainty into analysis so mm -hmm. we can see that uh, we can take different time periods into consideration we can take expectation aspect we can take uncertainty aspect all these kinds of things could be taken into consideration and, and you can improve and expand this model and theoretical extension um, and applications have been made to analyze the final and sorry financial and monetary markets and international trade as well as other subjects so um, even though the uh, original arrow debru model was formulated by arrow and debru uh, we could see that there have been many improvements um, coming on its way um, making the model to expand and extend but so that it could be applicable it could be uh, used uh, and it could be made applicable to several diverse phenomena with a general equilibrium structure the model is applicable in assessing the overall impact on resource allocation of policy changes in the arena of taxation tariff price control etc so when you could use this model in the arenas of taxation tariff price control and all uh, you you can see that this model has got a, a wide array of applications this model has been subject to criticism also so yeah, as in the case of every other economic models this model too is not an exemption uh, when it comes to criticism uh, uh, especially these model this particular model is criticized uh, uh, by looking into its assumptions if, since it, several of the assumptions made in the models are considered to be unrealistic it makes uh, some uh, some what to say it makes um, people to criticize this model from this uh, point of view or, or uh, from the point of view of assumptions however the criticism is not unique to arrow debris model it also applies to general equilibrium models when you look into the valuation general equilibrium model that model too is criticized from several viewpoints right so you cannot say that um, the arrow debris model is a bad model because it has got a wide array of applications as we have seen it is used with respect to taxation tariff uh, price controls all these kinds of things not only these are 
these are the only applications there have been many other applications of this model as well when especially when you could expand this model extend this model uh, and you could um, uh, incorporate the arena of time when you could incorporate the arena of uncertainty expectations all these thing, kinds of things uh, that th these things are actually improving this model right so as a result you can um, use this model in several other arenas as well uh, making this model uh, much more useful to different arenas uh, not only with respect to the uh, domain of economics but also this could be used um, outside the domain of economics as well. So in the case of this particular model the assumptions that each consumer have to be uh, have in the initial environment at least a positive uh, uh, quantity of all commodities or at least one commodity has uh, drawn substantial criticism. So, uh, here we could see that uh, some strong survival assumption and weak survival assumptions are there, right? And in the case of uh, Tantonment process, uh, and Tantonment process, you can see that uh, this requires that all the purchases be made when the competitive equilibrium is reached. What do you mean by competitive equilibrium in, in case of perfect competition? That is the ideal case, ideal case of market structure and that is something which is impossible to be seen in the real world. And this is claimed to be incompatible with the workings of the real economy, right? In the real economy, you have purchasing at, at the non-market clearing, uh, clearing price. You cannot see that uh, the market clearing price work, especially in few, when you have taxes, uh, the prices that consumers pay for the commodity is not the price that uh, the not the price that the uh, sellers get or the suppliers get right so in between there is some kind of third party or the third party in the form of government or in the form of uh, uh, dealers or something uh, like that or in that case you can see that the perfect competition is not the market structure that you would see in the real world and this is one of the example that will that proves that perfect competition is something that is uh, impossible to be seen in the real world. And that's all for today. Uh, please like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos. And you can be a part of my Telegram group and Telegram channel to discuss your doubts. I'll be providing the links of both of my, uh, both of my Telegram group and Telegram channel in the description box. Uh, that's it. If you have any doubt, you can uh, comment it on the comment box. Um, and... Um, uh, I think uh, you got some idea with respect to this arrow debris model and it's all about um, proving the existence um, uh, of uh, existing criteria of what to say the um, general equilibrium model of Leon, Leon Valdres. So that's it. Uh, thank you.